The tree is living wood. The chairs and the fence also wood and quite a bit more useful in their various ways. Are not alive. Life is a miracle. Consciousness is an even bigger miracle. And I find myself compelled to say again, I'm not being the least bit cynical when I say that. Consciousness is a miracle. The fact that I can say these words to you, that you can listen, is completely improbable and miraculous. Sometimes it's tempting to believe that a god must have sent the miracle and that we should feel blessed by that god. And you should believe that if you want to, even if there isn't any evidence to support that belief. It's a belief based purely on faith. That doesn't mean that it's wrong. It also doesn't mean that it's right either. Carry on however you like. Don't expect me to necessarily see it your way. And I'll do the same for you. The dark side of the real miracle is that everything dies. That consciousness and even sensation do not ever persist indefinitely. Spiders die and leaves die. Relationships and networks die. People die. Empires die. Whole species die. Maybe including our own someday. More to the point, you're going to die and I'm going to die. The miracle of experiencing, this miracle of knowing and being, it always has an expiration date. And none of us ever know for sure when the expiration will happen, only that it surely will. So, in the neighborhood of 10,000 years ago, 10,000 years before present, and the actual date is going to vary widely across space and time and cultures, humans collectively made a fateful decision to stop moving and hunting and gathering and settle down. That decision had some benefits, and everyone sees that clearly. But no one really likes to talk about what we lost in the process, and what we lost was huge. We committed ourselves to believing that embarking on the path of progress, of civilization, was the right thing to do. In any case, within a matter of a couple generations, whether it was right and good or not, that decision became increasingly irreversible, irreversible for almost everyone. So also within a few generations from settling and piling up food surpluses into granaries and cattle pens, Inequality became permanent. Some people had a lot. Some people had nothing. We began to take it on faith that this was a natural state of affairs. And to build ourselves extended belief structures, like the infamous one called the divine right of kings, whether we called them pharaohs, or sheriffs, 
or shahs or oligarchs or senators or his excellency. So speaking generally, the first kings, the first senators, were total despots who had no reason to believe in equality or liberty, much less justice for all. Rule over the poor or weak by the rich or strong was just all a part of God's plan. The names of the gods change all the time, but not the purpose of gods. The more wealth and property you had, the more self-evident it became that you were blessed by divine favor, as opposed to the less fortunate in the same river valley, and certainly as opposed to those barbarians in the next valley over, to say nothing of the stupid and illiterate mountain dwellers who everyone freely hated. Over time, absolute despotism seemed to yield somewhat to other ways of seeing the civilized human situation. We call these other ways monarchy, feudalism, capitalism, communism, fascism, socialism, and there's a long, long list of thousands more. One in particular, called democracy, became a huge favorite because it claimed to support the rule of the people, by the people, for the people. Which sounds absolutely great. And again, I'm not being the least bit cynical. But which people? Well... For a start, property-owning males of a more pale skin tone. Not slaves, certainly. Not women. Not children. Not blacks or refugees or sharecropping renters. Modern fans of democracy will say, but we freed the slaves. We gave those women the right to vote. Progress. Progress. Any day now, we will even get around to tapping the granaries and feeding the poors. You have to be patient. This way of believing, this democracy of ours, it isn't perfect by any means, but it is better than all the others. To which I say, you're right. You're right on paper. It sounds so much better than rule by the rich and the strong. I salute and support everything you profess to believe in. But when I wake from my dreaming and I open my eyes, what I see is a species, us, for whom nothing meaningful has changed in the 10,000 years since the first cities and the original sinful inequalities emerged. I do see a world of highly evolved public relations skills. I hear a sweet and lovely rhetoric raised to an absolute art form by pretty and educated people well-dressed, well-groomed, charismatic, and inevitably self-interested and selling you on this point of view because it benefits them for you to be a believer too. Let me put it to you this way. When two nice Mormon boys come to your door in skinny ties and white shirts 
it's a pretty simple thing for most of us to say, no thanks. I'd rather not believe in the revealed truths of Joseph Smith and the angel Moroni and in the practicality of wearing magic underwear to get myself into some theoretical heaven someday. And don't think for a minute that I'm Mormon bashing. Take any peddled belief that seems a little alien to you. A belief in Zenu or Allah or the God of gods called Apollo or Zeus. The point is, it's easy to say, uh, no, no, and no, and a thousand times. No, not only no, but never. It's a different story though. When every parent you've ever known has one way or another nurtured a belief in you. When every teacher you ever loved was on board when every single news anchor you ever admired or hated for that matter is preaching the same essential doctrine, give or take a few tweaks. It's much, much harder to resist falling for their story and their worldview. It's much easier to believe that you're in fact thinking for yourself while at the same time being completely encased and enmeshed in the theory of progress and the doctrine of civilization. It's easy still to believe that you live in a democracy and it's only a little bit harder to dispute some of those points of doctrine on the edge of things and say, of course the capitalists are lying to us, but thank the atheist God that at least Karl Marx saw clearly and had it right. Civilization is the most successful cult in all of recorded history. And whether you believe that the best prophet is Marx or Jesus or Jefferson or Che or the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, as is your right to believe, you're still in the cult in the same way that a fish is in water. And so am I, six days out of seven. So you've fallen victim to a completely transparent cult. What do you need to do to fix it? The first thing is that you need to stay in school. Staying in school, staying out of jail will bring you to a better job. And a better job will make you richer and being richer will make you happier. It's simple. And if you take all that on faith and at the end of your days, somehow you're still not happy, well, stop being selfish. Take it to the next level and realize that at least you left this world a better place for the children. Didn't you? The secret name of God in the cult. Let me whisper it to you. Is progress. We lay down our burden. We lay down our lives in the holy name of progress. Amen.